female dementia residents can have great senses of humour. And I had this one woman that I was working with, very dry, wry sense of humour. And I was in her room and this man knocked at the door. Whether he was a wanderer or intentionally knocking, not sure. But she answered it and she said, in a month. And I thought, what's that about, in a month? Anyway, she came back to me and she said, he wants to see me, but I said, in a month, but he won't remember. <laughs> and I thought, does she do that to every man that comes to the door? Does she know that he has dementia or she's in a dementia unit? Anyway, there were so many questions I wanted to ask, but I didn't. It was so funny. You know, come back in a month, but he won't remember, so it doesn't matter. She'd probably been saying that patter when I think about it to all the men coming to the door. It was a great line because they probably wouldn't remember, but then again, maybe they did. And as to whether she said that to all the men or not, I don't know. But the researcher in me really wanted to question it because it, there were so many aspects to it that I could have learned. Like, was this an ongoing mantra to every man at the door that came to her room that she said to sort of get rid of them because she liked her own space, she liked her own quiet, she didn't like people about, and if they did come into the room, it wasn't good. You know, you didn't want to come into a room unannounced because she would, you know, get a bit overly assertive about it. But this man actually was a very nice man. He was a gentleman. He wasn't a wanderer, as it, as it turned out. He was, he did have cognition and he genuinely did want to see her, but she genuinely did not want to see him. So for her to be able to say, come back in a month and he won't remember anyway, was a very good ploy, considering he had short-term dementia, short-term memory loss, like they all do. So this is the way that humour works in a dementia unit. It can be dry, it can be wry. Observational humour and improvisational humour. They're really the two big aspects of humour that happen in a dementia unit because most of the day, most of the time, dementia residents spend their time looking and observing. That's what they do all day, either out the window or more, or more so at each other in the unit and the staff and the comings and going of the many people that come servicing the dementia unit. So observational comedy is very big and there's many residents that are very witty and they can improvise and they do improvise very well. It's hard to explain really unless you've actually worked there as to why it is so funny. But when you're working there, there really is a lot of fun, a lot of banter all day long. And it's one of the big benefits of working at a dementia unit, that fun factor in fact, because if it didn't have that, it would be a difficult, demanding place to work at, which it still is. But that fun factor for staff gives you that lightness to be able to cope with the heavy load of it all. And for residents, they can enjoy themselves. I mean, there's lots that's going on. And the juxtaposition, the contrasting factor, I think is the big thing. Like with any humour, if you've got contrast, you're going to be able to get a laugh out of it somehow. And because in a dementia unit, so much is going on in so many ways, so many contrasts on every level, so many contrasts, age groups, condition, cognitive ability, physical ability, fashion, non-fashion, on it goes. So there's plenty to play with. So if you already have that humorous bent and you're able to see the funny side of things, certainly in a dementia unit, dementia unit you'll be able to find quite a lot of fun at play and it's not it's not at the expense of other people it's humor inclusive humor not exclusive humor people don't laugh at each other dementia residents are very sympathetic and empathetic towards each other so they certainly wouldn't laugh at each other but they do have a good laugh they do have a good joke and it's a fantastic place to work in you really do get more laughs there than anywhere Really, in fact, if you stop working there, one of the things you miss the most is not having, not laughing as much as you were when you were there. So it's actually very healing and helpful for spirit, soul and body when you're there, having a good laugh. And <laughs> when I think about it, I used to love that part of it. So I've written 
two books on these topics at length, The Resident's Voice and The Resident's Rise. So the residents can have a voice and that the residents can rise and do well. For when people are going into dementia units, all you need to know this book and when they're already in a dementia unit and settled and all the challenges that come, the residents rise. The first half is a novel, day-to-day -day challenges and events for dementia residents and the second half is a DIY educationals. Systematically formatted everything you need to know to be able to help someone either going into the unit or in the unit. Practical things, practical and positive. Intentionally positive, everything there is positive. Everything in these videos is intentionally positive because it needs to be. You need a lot of energy to help people with dementia because it's it's time consuming, energy consuming, physically demanding if you're caring for them. So you need that energy, that positive energy to, you know, give you the stamina. And anyway, really the negative doesn't help. It only drains us. So that's why you will find that these techniques are positive and practical. So thank you. My, oh, because my background is physiotherapy, by the way. So physical, practical, positive really is what physiotherapy is all about. So all of that ethos and uh, those work aspects I've brought into these videos. So thank you for your support and your likes and looks. I really appreciate it. And please pass on the links and subscribe. And thank you for those of you on TikTok that have. Thank you.